Let's get started with Jester. Okay, we're starting with Jester, which is a uh, Nim Nimble library that gives you a what they call a DSL or a domain specific language. In other words, it's like writing your own subset to the language that allows it to make it easy to do one particular thing in one particular field. In this particular case, it makes it easy to make a well-defined website and it handles all of the handling of the HTTP request and the responses and all the other things that would come with running a web server, including running it threaded. And we'll get into that much later. Uh, but Let's start off by, uh, first off, installing Jester and starting to use it with our book club website. Okay, we've got a book club directory. Uh, let's install Jester. And let's get started with our app. So first, import Jester. And the, uh, the domain-specific language, the DSL, has you start with defining your routes. And um, so if we just type in routes, colon, not surprisingly, that's what it's called, and we list our first route. So we're going to start with our index page. So get slash, which will be our home page and um, we respond with so respond resp and then uh, hello world so this will be our first just get it up and running and see if it works at all so let's go ahead and save this and let's try running it so nimc app.nim there it is and let's run our app and as you can see here, it says Jester is making jokes at and then the web address that it's currently running at. So it's by default, it goes to your local uh, loopback address plus uh, on port 5000. And right now it's running in not, excuse me, right now it's running in non-threaded mode, which means you get to see everything on this one screen. Um, the benefit of doing that, especially when you're first testing and debugging the app, is you see everything. You get all these status messages. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. And there it is. Here we hear tiny little letters in the corner. It says hello world. I couldn't make that a little bit bigger. Hello world. So it works, and if we go back to our terminal session, we see where it gets a page from slash. It responds with a uh, HTTP code of 200, which is OK, and it returns the content of that page. Um, also, this being a typical web browser, it's looking for the icon associated with my website. And of course, I didn't make such an icon, so it says 404 not found. All right, let's expand on this a little bit. Okay, routes, of course, starts the list, uh, but get is a particular type of request being sent to the web server. Uh, but you can also respond with other things. In fact, if someone were to post, say, a form to this same address, you could do a post. And again, you could have a response of, you know, something else. Uh, the idea is that you could do all of the known ways of respond, or of, excuse me, you can capture all of the known ways of requesting information from the web server. Specifically, looking at uh, the w3.org docs for all the ways to request information from a web server, um, the two most common you'll see is get and post. Uh, get is where you basically typically pass the parameters for the page you're looking for, if there are any parameters in the actual URL being requested. And post allows you to post a, a series of named identifiers in the background. Uh, but the four most common, of course, are get, post, put, and delete. In fact, you'll use all four of those if you're, say, writing an API. A typical website, though, really, generally speaking, just sticks with get and post. Um, now, you see there's some other more obscure types of things like options and head, uh, trace and connect. Jester does support those methods, but we're, we're not going to get into trying to explain those in this series of videos. Uh, but the information is out on the internet if you want to take a look at them. 
Not surprisingly, all of the words used by the DSL, options, get, head, it's exactly what you see here, except in lowercase. So if you want to get something, you use get. If you want to put something, you use put. Let's go ahead and embellish on our website a little bit. Let's go ahead and create a registration page that takes a form where we ask for, say, the user's email address. And then another page that says hello to that user after they've registered. So uh, here we do, we'll do a get uh, register form. And we'll come up with a response for that. And then we're gonna have a post register form. We'll have a response to that. Whoops, don't forget my colons here. And then I'll have some kind of response there. And then, and here we'll have a hello page of some kind. And we'll go ahead and pass in the name of the, or the email address of the person registering in as a parameter on the URL. So uh, how about hello slash, and then the email address. And in Jester, anything that's preceded with a and symbol is a variable name being passed in on the URL. So there's email, and uh, this one we can go ahead and write. I'll just say hello. And here's the way you retrieve that parameter once it's been passed in. So it'll take this parameter and it'll use this as a substitution. And so, uh, and then now that we've used a string function like there, I need to add in the uh, string utils library. Let's go ahead and make our register form. One moment, I'll be right back. Okay, what I've done here is I went ahead and in a uh, string variable, go ahead and created the web page. Uh, it's just straightforward HTML. Uh, it has a form on it where you put in your email address and you click a button to send that email address for registration. And of special note here, notice that uh, the action for this form is its own address. This is actually a fairly common thing to do. Um, it goes to its own address, and if there's a problem, oftentimes you want to go back to the very same registration page telling people, you know, you, know, you need to tell so say something in the email or something like that, so that bad data can be caught early, and, uh, and you could prompt the user to enter in for information. And of course, this method here is post because we're going to a post web page. So one moment while I fill out the handling of this. All right, let's go ahead and look at the code I just wrote. So there is a request variable that's created by the, the macro setup that creates these routes. And so it's uh, you're not going to see anything on here reference to request, but it's coming out of the routes that you're seeing here. Uh, request has a meaning. Let's go ahead and go to the... Uh, there we go. There's the documentation for it on the Jester's uh, README page. Here we can get all the information that's coming back on that request object, and one of, among them there is a table of params. So let's, and we're looking for the email, this email right here coming back in, checking to see if it's empty. If it's empty, it's redirecting back to the main page. You could also respond with a, a new register form here. Generally speaking, that's a bad practice. Uh, the reason why is that if someone comes to this post page and they hit refresh, it will attempt to send the same information again. Uh, or if they, it, there's actually a variety of reasons why it's generally a bad idea. It's better to redirect out of a post. And this is just my personal opinion based on past experience making other websites. Um, so other people might disagree with this. But generally speaking, I never respond with an actual web page to a post. I always redirect somewhere else so that it's no longer, it's not bookmarkable. It's, there's all kinds of reasons you don't want to do that. Um, and so if it's nothing's filled out, it's sending it back to the form. You know, basically you need to fill something out here. Um, otherwise it goes on to and redirects to the post. Whoops, did I make this a post page? <laughs> Bad me. This is a get page. It redirects to this page with their email address. And it says, hello, email address. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and be a little bit fancy. Let's go ahead and put a error message here. Let's 
put a bold message here. Oh, it's in one paragraph. And that's where the error message will go. And of course, if there is no error message, that'll be blank. And due to the way HTML works, that should all be empty and not visible until an actual error message occurs. We've written a lot of stuff. Let's see if it all works. I'll recompile. So far, no problem. Let's run it. We still have our hello world as the main page. Let's go to not found. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, yeah, that's the whole trailing slash thing. Let me, uh, let's make two versions of this page, one with an error and one without. There's this plain register form, and uh, we'll pass in an empty string if there is no error, because still I want to handle this dollar sign one here in the middle of this. Uh, let's save, recompile. Can't be reached. Oh, <laughs> and run it. Oh, and there it is. There's a registry form. And it should be, if I type in nothing, let's go back to my code here. If I type in nothing, it will redirect me back to the version of this page that has an error message in it. So there it is, need email address. I'll put in the email, I'll put in a made up email address here. Send email address. And it says 404 not found. What? Oh, you know what it is? I need to, just as I created two versions of this get, I need to create two versions of this post. Well, you get to see the debugging process. <laughs> not how I, not as smooth as I wanted it to be, but there we go. All right, so we have two posts here. I'll tell you what, rather than uh, make this, ex I'll make this more explicit. So it always goes to the same kind goes back to itself explicitly. Compile. So let's go back a stage. I put in a fake one. Hello, Larry at Larry.com. There we go. Now it's working. And we can go back and take a look at our terminal log. We see where I got the or essentially I went back to the place, went back to that form where I needed an email address. I put it in, it posted to register.form, it redirected me to the hello message. So here we've shown a basic everyday website. So far I've shown you how to use a response to a request and how to use a redirect to a request. Are there other ways to respond to a uh, web request, and actually the answer to that is that actually there are dozens, and so that's a bit beyond what I'm going to do here on this intro video. Uh, but one of the things to keep in mind, though, is that the RESP uh, response is actually very, very flexible. In fact, if you go into the source code for Zester.nim, uh, we can see actually here many variants of the response template. Um, including one that allows you to pass in an HTTP code and your content and content type explicitly. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to return with a 404 error on a particular email address, I could change this route right here. Simply put in if email equals one, two, three then respond with a HTTP 404. Else, respond with the hello. Let's uh, try this out. Looks good so far. Let's try running it. I'll send address 123 and there it is. A 404 page can't be found. The get hello123 returns a 404 not found. 
All right, and the last thing we're going to cover are settings. Uh, notice I'm running a server here on the loopback address at port 5000. What if we wanted to change some of those characteristics of the server? Not surprisingly, the way to change settings in the DSL is with the settings command. Settings. Um, again, a lot of this information can find it found in the docs, but let me show you quickly how to change the port number. Let's go ahead and set that to... Um, I don't know, 5001, excuse me. Let's see if that works. Okay, shows it being at 5001. And there's the website. I mentioned earlier that we're not going to talk a lot about threading, uh, but I do want to introduce it to you. And one of the things to look for to prevent having problems later on when you want to turn threading on. So first off, how do you turn threading on? Um, it's basically a command line parameter when you're compiling the app. So let's go ahead and do that. So nim capp.nim, but let's go ahead and turn on threading. It's threads on. Now we have the threaded version of the Here we see it's uh, started up 12 threads and it's listening on to port 5001. Uh, and now when I go to a web page and go back and take a look at my log, notice I don't see anything. That's because that request came in on a different thread. So the downside to running with threads on as you've lost a lot of your debugging information. Uh, the bonus though is that by running and taking advantage of all the threads available on your processor, you can actually get a very high performance server running. But something to keep in mind when you're doing your coding. Each of these requests coming in are individual blocks. So the scoping of this block is local to this request. So if I create a variable here, var, a int equals four, and I tried to use that variable here, this will not compile, because this A only exists in the context of this block. This is an undefined variable, because this is in a different block. Now you can use globals. In theory, you could do this. But generally speaking, don't do that. It is much better to stay away from globals. And the reason why is that threads don't like globals. Now, if this were a constant, like if I'm re referring to, notice it didn't complain about this global here, which is a constant for the register form. And that's strictly because that's, it is a constant. And so if I have multiple threads looking at the same memory area and it never changes, it doesn't matter. Whereas if you had a variable that's in the global space, and one thread changes that variable while another thread is actively using it, you can have very unexpected results. So generally speaking, don't use globals unless you know precisely what you're doing and that you're doing it in a thread safe manner. Um, again, way outside the scope of this intro course, uh, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, in fact, a lot of the websites I've seen written for Jester right now, uh, when they comes to say accessing a database or something like that, they'll literally, especially especially works with SQL databases, they'll connect live in the context of the thread to the database, use the database and disconnect it all within the context. They don't go to a global pool or you use a global pooled uh, database driver that's designed to have multiple long lasting connections running there. But again, you, again, it's best to keep that in mind. So there we go. We have a uh, quick introduction to Jester. We're going to be building on this quite a bit. And in fact, in the next video, we're going to go into different ways to do templates. Uh, as you see in a current source code, I'm just using this constant string. Uh, but there's actually many more flexible ways to do this, um, including one involving macros and the one that I'll be using for the rest of this course, which is the Mustachio library. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.